Hello everyone, my name is Sachin and um, today I'll be discussing about Kafka. Um, in fact, um, uh, I'm planning to have a, a kind of a series or uh, divide this learning into various small, small videos, uh, very, which is like focused on one or two or really limited number of concepts. And in most of the cases, we'll also see how to uh, do some kind of a hands-on with these concepts. Uh, so let's get it started. Um, so basically, um, for today's session, uh, let's see what is Kafka. So basically, um, it's nothing but um, um, it's a it's based on a published publisher subscriber model where a producer will produce some message and a consumer somebody will receive some kind of a message. So it's kind of a queuing system or messaging system, whatever uh, suits best for you to call. And why we are, by the way, um, and it's why we are using Kafka will come to later, but this is highly scalable and reliable. And um, definitely the ordering is maintained, but there is some uh, limitation or I would say feature. This is like within a partition. That's okay if you don't understand the partition, which is fine. We'll cover everything in a more detail in the future videos. All right, so why Kafka? So if you go back um, there, back in time, like the, if there are various services and you need to basically communicate from one service to another service, you will basically make a synchronous call to that particular service. But um, as in when systems are producing more and more data and you need some kind of um, building a reliable data pipeline and that's where Kafka comes into picture. So, uh, the first is like decoupling uh, the services. So for example, let's say there are various services generally that's going to S3, S3, S5, and they need to communicate with each other. And if, if there is no Kafka, they will, let's say service one has to um, make a call. It's, it's doing its job and then it needs to make a call to service four and five. It will directly call that. Uh, it'll be kind of a mesh, uh, difficult to manage. Um, Kafka comes as a decoupling layer, so basically, each every service once they are done with their job they will produce a message right, to the kafka and any service which is interested in those messages can consume those messages so that's why there is no direct dependency with service one and let's say service four or service five um, they can just push a message to kafka and uh, other services can take it from from kafka so basically this works kind of a questioning and uh, basically uh, questioning on the basically on the consumer side Think about the service one is very aggressive in pushing some data, but service four has some, some downtime or probably it's not at that particular time is able to consume that kind of record. Now, what will happen if service one is making a direct call to service four and then service one will eventually end up into a, some kind of a, a, you know timeout exceptions or some um, memory issues, something like that. But uh, Kafka being a layer, which is like highly reliable, it's, it's pretty much that way you can rely on the database and really you need to rely on Kafka as long as it's set up properly. Uh, now think about service one is producing a lot of data, a bunch of data in that short period of time. It will get it stored into Kafka and service four or service five, they can take their own time to consume each and every messages. So this is the way it is like decoupled and this is providing some kind of a cushioning uh, to the consumer side. All right, and one of the best benefits, let's say for example, service four or service five is down. Uh, they cannot read the message that particular instance in time. Now, once they are up, now all these messages which has been pushed by the service to Kafka layer, they can be, you know, um, they can be replayed or let's say it is crashed and you want to replay all these messages which is being produced by service one, it can be easily done uh, using that. Now coming back, uh, it's highly scalable, yes, uh, because it provides the horizontal scaling. You can have multiple Kafka brokers. You can have as many as producers just producing events to the Kafka, you just dump it over there, and you can have as many as consumers. We'll discuss about partitioning, um, scalability, ordering much in detail and preferably with a um, hands-on session as well. But for now, you just understand that everything is scalable. The three main side on this the producer, what do you see on the top? Primarily, this S1, S2, S3, they are producing some data. The Kafka, um, this box is not just one machine. You could, in a production environment, you could have hundreds of machines which can form one cluster. 
right? So that is a horizontally scalable. Uh, scalable. Um, so interchangeably, the Kafka servers are also called Kafka broker. So one server uh, where Kafka is running, you can call it Kafka broker. All right, ordering is guaranteed uh, within a partition. Nothing about a distributed system. So everything is distributed just by the nature of a distributed systems where various machines may be placed in a different racks uh, and you are pushing some messages. Because of the nature of the distribution, you cannot guarantee the ordering. Uh, you send a ma one message to, let's say it reaches to machine one, another in machine two, and there could be some latency in machine one, and the message you have sent it before may take a little while to reach machine one, but the, mach the message two has reached machine two quickly. So definitely, the distrib if you are like assuming a distribution, the ordering cannot be guaranteed just by the nature of the distribution. However, ordering is guaranteed within a partition. What does typically mean is in a nutshell is basically, um, we'll discuss about more topics and um, partition in more detail. The thing about you are pushing a message to a topic, you can have a multiple partitions and one partition will reside in one machine. And now all that messages which are landing on that partition, the ordering within a partition can be guaranteed. All right, so I think for today's, um, uh, for this video, um, I just plan to cover these are very high level. What is Kafka and why we are using Kafka? Um, there won't be a hands on session on this video, but definitely next uh, session onwards when we will be installing Kafka and running a producer and consumer, um, then we will write some code. So uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And uh, if you want some um, suggestions, uh, please. Um, if you want to give something, please put your comments below. Okay, thank you. All right.